So unlike your geometry classes, the SAT math section doesn't really have much to say about congruence, um, and only a little bit to say about similarity. And we're talking about congruent triangles and similar triangles. But still, I want to make sure that you're aware of it, and that you know the terms, and you know what it means. And also for similarity, you know one key fact about it, which may come up on the SAT, just in case it does come up. So first things first, before we talk about congruence and similarity, I need to talk about corresponding sides. Corresponding sides. Let's take two triangles. And I'm going to exaggerate this for effect. Um, let me see if I can. There we go. So I got a triangle like that, and then I've got a triangle. Let me see if I can do this. You know what? Hmm. Can I rotate? That would make it easy. I don't know if I can. Um, I don't really know how. I don't know this program very well. Uh, okay. So let me just try to do it myself. Um, it's like this, like this, like this. Okay, good enough. When we're comparing two triangles, we have to compare apples to apples, right? We have to compare what's called corresponding sides. And what that means is you've got to compare sides that are, this is going to get a little complex sounding, but that are in the right relative positions. Now that's a very fancy way of saying you just got to compare sides that are comparable. Right? Why would I compare this small side to this big side of the triangle? When really I probably want to compare this side to this side. And note, this is the side that's in between the two big sides, so this is the side that's in between the two big sides, right? Similarly, why would I want to compare anything but this longest side of the triangle with this longest side of the triangle? And then finally we can compare this side right here to this side right here. We could also do this with angles, right? I want to compare compare this angle to the same angle that's in between the purple and the green, so this guy. I want to compare this angle, purple and orange, to purple and orange, and I would compare this green and orange to this green and orange, right? So this is something you already know how to do, and it may be intuitive for you, but I just want to make sure we know that corresponding sides and angles are when you compare apples to apples, when you compare the, each side to each other, that should be compared, we compare the angles to each other, that should be compared, and this comes into play when we talk about congruent triangles. So if the sides, so there's a number of ways to talk about congruence. You might remember this from like your geometry class, SAS, SSS, ASA, all that stuff. You don't really need to know that. All we need to know for the test is two congruent triangles are triangles in which the sides are congruent to each other. Corresponding sides are equal, so orange equals orange, purple, purple, green, green. And the corresponding angles are congruent to each other. So pretty much these are identical triangles. They may not look at my pictures in great, but they're identical triangles. They are congruent. Congruent. Um, you don't really need to know, like, you know, SAS, SSS, ASA for congruence, for triangles. Um, you know, I guess I, I just mentioned it. You know triangles are congruent with the following, one of the following three things is true. First, if you find out that the sides are equal, or if you find out that two sides and an angle in between them are equal, so say orange and purple and gray angle, orange, purple, and gray angle were congruent, that would tell you that these guys were congruent. And then finally, if you knew two angles were equal and a side in between them, so for instance, blue angle, gray angle, and purple side, blue angle, gray angle, and purple side, if they were congruent, you know the triangles would be congruent. You don't really need to know that, that's a little bit advanced, but just in case, just to jog your memory a bit. So that's congruent triangles. Let's take a look at similar triangles. This is something that they're more likely to test you on for the SAT, but even still, it's going to be rare. It's not going to come up very often at all. So let's say we had a triangle like this, and then let's say we had a triangle like this. These are clearly not congruent just by looking at them, but are they similar? Well, what is similar? It simply means that the triangles are in a ratio to each other or proportional to each other, the sides in particular. The sides are in proportion or are some ratio of each other. Another way to put that more simply is that this guy is just a scale model of this guy, or I should say this guy is a scale model of this guy, or this guy is this triangle blown up on you know, X number of times. Keeping the relative sizes of the sides and keeping the relative size, obviously, of the angles. Um, now one thing to say as well is that even though the sides are unequal and they're in proportion, the angles are actually between the three triangles or two, between the two triangles are equal. So this angle corresponds to this one and it is equal. This angle corresponds to this one and they're equal and this one to this one and they're equal. 
So the sides are in proportion. What does that mean? Let's say this side was length 1, this was 2, this was 3. If this were 3, what would the length of this side be? Well, if we look at the corresponding sides here, side purple and side purple, these sides correspond right there. They match up to each other. They're the same relative side of these two triangles. From 1 to 3, that means this guy is being blown up 3 times. So that means this side is going to have to be 6. And if this is 3, then this is going to have to be 9. If we have a situation, let's say we have two triangles like this, and we're told that they're similar, and you know two triangles are similar, by the way, if their, si if their angles are equal to each other. So let me just do this correctly. Uh, or if their sides are in proportion. Let's say we're told they're similar, and let's say they're, this is 4, this is 16, this is 10, and this is x. And the question is, what is x going to be? Let's say we couldn't eyeball it. Let's say it was some, you know, I know it's four times as big, but let's say we did, couldn't really eyeball it. What do we do? Well, this is where we set up a proportion, and we say, okay, there's a lot of different proportions we can set up, but we can do something like, you know, 4 is to 16 as 10 is to x. Note the top here corresponds to this triangle. And the bottom here corresponds to this triangle. This piece corresponds to this bottom side. And this fraction corresponds to this side over here. So note how there's a balance in this proportion. And that's what a proportion is about. It's capturing the relative uh, magnitude of the sides and the relationships between the sides. To solve this, I would just cross multiply. I get 4x equals 160. So x would equal 40. So this would be 40. And now there's a lot of different rate proportions we could set up. We could do 4 is to 10 as 16 is to x. Notice I'm keeping the balance, right? 4 is to 10 as 16 is to x. Um, actually, this would be, this is like this. The, my angles are not right, but given how I wrote this, probably here, we'll do this x. That works. That keeps it good. I could also do. Um, x is to 16 as 10 is to 4. Uh, right? I can do a lot of different proportions. The point is that they keep the balance, and they're getting the x in here so I can cross multiply and solve for it. And that's pretty much all you need to know about similar and congruent triangles. Again, this doesn't come up often, but it is something you should be familiar with.